Well, with fishing season just around the corner, two months out, and we're supposed to get four to six inches today of snow, I figured, just figured I'd make a video of some of the steps I make or I take to create some spinners for trout season. Here's an example of what I made, just a regular uh, spinner here with brass beads and a simulated pearl at the bottom. And here's another one with a couple beads, a lead body weight, and just another neon yellow uh, bead at the bottom. So this, I was wanted to make this video just for people who are just starting out. Maybe they don't know what to get or confused on what they should need. So hopefully this will help some of you out. But the first thing you're going to need to do is get some wire here. And this wire you can get online. I don't know if you can see, but this has a loop in the end. And that's where you're, uh, you're going to tie your line off for your spinner. Just a regular line, solid, nothing on it. Whoop. But you're going to take one of these first off. And then I have here in this box, these are one, what are these? I think one sixteenth beads. I have a marked here because I always lose track. Uh, these are one eighth salted brass beads. And you're going to need these, but we're going to put that aside for now because the first thing you want to do is you're going to take a clevis here. This is just a little clevis that's going to go on your wire, and this is going to hook on your blade, which is right here. Just a regular blade. This one, look back here again. French spinner number one brass blade. So first thing you want to do is take your clevis and run it through that little hole. And it's going to stick out just like that. And then you want to take your wire, run it through both, part, both parts of that clevis, and there you go. There's the first step of making your spinner. Next you're going to take your small bead here and this is what the clevis is going to ride on to make it spin. See how it kind of threads on there and if you can see now it's hard to do it now but that's what the clevis rides on to make it spin. Now this uh, particular spinner I'm going to make has, I have a lead body weight which is right in here that I'm going to use just to diff make it a little different it's just a regular lead body weight. That's going to come in later. But after your uh, small brass bead, I'm going to step it up to a different size here. What size is this? This is a 3 16th brass bead right here. I'm just going to thread that on onto my wire. Like so. And then just because I like to add a little bit more weight, I'm going to put another one on. So two brass balls right here. See how it's starting to play out. Then right after that, I'm just going to take this little lead body weight. It's pink and white with a little bit of uh, dark color purple or something in there. And I'm going to thread that onto my wire here. So you can see it's starting to take shape. How it's spinning there. That's what the fish are likely going to see. And now because it's a pink body, white body, I have a little pearl bead. Well, it's not really pearl. It's just a plastic bead that I have here. I have a bunch of them, as you can see. But I'm gonna, just going to take that, and I'm going to thread on, that on. Just get a little bit more of a character. Something different. Kind of keep it the same color of what the uh, body is here. If you can see right there kind of shaping out to what it's going to look like. Next, uh, I got these pliers here. This is something you, it's helpful to have. You can see the one end here, it's rounded. It's not flat, it just has a little bit of a round edge to it, which helps whenever you're bending your wire. And I'm going to show you that now. I just take it a little bit low here, below the last pearl I put on, the last bead. I don't know, we want a sixteenth of an inch there. Some guys do more, but I don't like to have a lot of the wire exposed at the top here. That's just my preference. It's just the way I do it. So I'm going to take my jeweler pliers here and I'm going to have the rounded edge facing me because that's the way I'm going to bend the line. You can bend it the other way, but it's going to be like a it's not going to be a circle at the end. 
like it is here at the top it's going to be like a squarish and just because the way I'd like to do it I like to have it equal looking the same like I said it's just my preference you can use a regular needle nose for this and everything but I had these lying around so I'm going to use these so what I do is just bend that up like so your wire and it's next thing keep bending it more to where you're going to complete your circle your end where your hooks gonna go now I'll bend it up a little bit just to make it easier for my hook to get on here take my hook just a regular treble hook regular treble hook and I'm gonna run it through my line my wire and it's on the bottom now I'll just take my pliers or uh, my jeweler plier here again and just finish that circle off so the hook can't come out or can't move. Let's see here. Just bend it over, and that hook is now locked in place. Next thing I do, these are a little bit overkill, these pliers, but I like to use these pliers anyway, just because they're big and they're, they're easier to use to me, at least. I like to get a good grasp on it because there has been times if you don't hold your pliers tight and you're stretching your line across or you're wrapping your line across your wire, there's been times where this has slipped and I actually hooked my finger a couple of times. So this is why I like using these pliers. They have a nice uh, good grasp where your hook's not going to come out when you're wrapping your line around itself. But as you can see how the line is here, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this line around itself and that's going to keep your hook in place. So all I do is just take that, hold on tight to my pliers, and start wrapping the line one or two times. And there it is. You can see how it wrapped there. And then I just take a pair of side cutters get as close as I can cut it off that's your excess wire that you're not going to use and there's your spinner now point of before I do my next step I just want to point out why I do it as you can see if you were to draw a straight line with this shaft down to where the arrow or the uh, hook is oh, sorry put it in camera there if you draw a straight line down here you see the hook kind of sits a little bit to the left some guys, I don't know if they don't just care or the hook isn't straight. It's not lined up with the actual shaft. So what I do is I'll take my pliers and some guys just let it like that. But I take my pliers and uh, whatever side it needs to straighten out with the line, straight line of the wire, I'll just take it and bend it that way a little bit until it lines straight up. See if you would draw a line down there, the hook's almost laying. It could come a little bit more, but that's pretty close. It's almost coming straight down with the wire. And that's kind of what, what you're looking for here. Just to come straight down in line with itself. Because you don't want it hanging off to the side like this. Because as it's going through the water, it might, you know, the fish aren't really, they might not get it the first time. They might have to take a couple times to, before they bite it, before you hook them. But that's what I like to do. And just take that and bend it just a little bit. So that's now straight and that's all there is to it pretty much you're ready to go tie this on your line chuck it out there hopefully catch some fish but like I said there's a lot of different methods you can use here's one just we made right now here's another kind of the same but instead of a there's a different lead body and a different bead at the bottom and then here's one with just no lead weight this is just all brass beads and with this simulated white pearl at the bottom. And realistically, why I got into this, it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, the startup you're looking to spend. I actually have a sales receipt here from the last purchase I made to get uh, the stuff needed to make these lures. And for, what did I spend? $39.90 I got... A hundred of the uh, solid brass one-eighth beads 
a hundred of the three sixteenth brass beads, hundred of the seven thirty second brass beads, the quarter brass beads also a hundred, and these simulated white pearl beads, a hundred of these, these French spinners. Those got a hundred of those and these folded clevises. And for forty dollars it's not actually that bad. Because when you're looking, what, $4.44, I think was the last rooster tail I bought. You buy one rooster tail for $4, and you have you get one cast out of it. You throw it in a tree, get it stuck, and next thing you know, you lost. There goes $4 out the window. Well, making one of these, hopefully you don't get it caught in a tree or a snag. But if you do lose one, well, guess what? You just go home and tie another, and you're back out the next day. And also, it's nice... I don't have any now, but you can experiment a lot. You know, you might put something, you you know, you might do these big brass beads first and then a little to see how that'll work. You can experiment. Whereas, if you go out and buy something, realize you don't like it, well, there goes money wasted. At least you can take these out, try it. Maybe you don't like the way it spins, or you don't like the way it works in the water. Well, guess what? You come home, cut the wire, you get all your beads back, and the only thing you're looking at is a new wire, which is also very inexpensive. So that's the reason why I got into it. Uh, it's a fun hobby, something to do on nice or bad days when there's nothing to do, uh, and uh, just something to do to get ready for fishing season. So good luck to everyone out there this season. I uh, hope you have a good time, and I hope this video helped.